welcome everyone. I'm David McGinty, the Global Director for the Platform to Accelerate the Circular Economy, or PACE. We're excited to be facilitating today's discussion on what we can do to scale our circular economy actions to support recovery and resilience. Born from the forum, uh, PACE is a coalition of over 80 CEOs and ministers working on rapidly scaling circular economy solutions around the globe. And during 2020, coalition partners have been working on several fronts, including launching new alliances in Africa and Latin America, launching seven new projects, and brokering new partnerships on critical issues like trade and climate. We're excited to bring insights from that work to today's discussions. But first, uh, a little housekeeping. If you experience technical difficulties during the webinar, please use the chat function by adding a comment. We'll have support on the line to assist you. The chat function appears as a conversation bubble in the Zoom toolbar. We will post information during the session in the chat function, so please keep an eye out. Throughout the webinar, we invite you to share your thoughts and questions, or if you prefer to be heard, feel free to raise your hand. To raise your hand, select the hand icon in the Zoom toolbar, and we'll call on you, and you can unmute your mic uh, to ask your question. So if we look at the agenda, through, through today's agenda, we'll hear from several global leaders with most of the time spent in discussion. First, Antonia Gowell, the deputy head of the Forum Center for Global Public Goods, will set the stage for us. Then Roald Lapierre, the vice minister for the environment of the Netherlands, will share perspectives from the Netherlands on this moment and their actions. I'll come back and lead us into breakout sessions with discussions on food, fashion, plastics, and electronics. So please begin to consider which breakout group you would like to join, and I'll provide instructions on that later. Now, please join me in welcoming Antonia Gowell. Hey, thanks, David. And uh, on behalf of the World Economic Forum, uh, I really want to welcome everyone. I'm, I'm sorry not to see everybody in person in New York, but it's a pleasure to, to join you all here uh, virtually uh, for this session on strengthening recovery and resilience through the circular economy. And I think um, the key word here is also action. Um, so I think just reminding, as, as David said, we launched PACE in 2018 with, with many of you on the line, really with two key objectives. So number one, is we know that to progress the circular economy, we need the public and the private and other stakeholders to really come together uh, to turn commitments, first take commitments, and then translate these commitments into collaborative actions because we know that we still need to unblock a lot of the system level barriers that are standing in our way uh, of progress. So I think we really have to come together and, and drive forward action in these, in these different areas. Um, the good news, in a sense, is that we find that this platform and the relevance of this issue remains completely relevant uh, in the current context. And, and what, what I'll highlight here is really four dimensions, I suppose, that we can think about these issues um, from in relation to the Great Reset Initiative, also that the forum is really driving and, and pushing through the Sustainable Development Impact Summit, but also as we both address the immediate crisis, as well as uh, work with economies to, to come through to recovery. Um, so the first point that I'll, I'll talk about a bit is shared prosperity. Um, so there are more than 2 billion people working informally, according to the International Labor Organization. That's about 62% of the global workforce. Um, we'll talk today, as, as David mentioned, about key value chains, fashion, electronics, plastics, Food, And so we need to recognize that a large number of the workers um, at the beginning and the end of these value chains are informal or working under very tenuous conditions. For example, the sudden slowdown that we saw in the demand across the fashion textiles industry has resulted in the quick and sudden loss of employment for many vulnerable workers in factories who have no social security safety net. Um, and so what we need to do is really focus on the fact also uh, that our current system of tight and rapid um, throughput has resulted in some of these unsustainable practices as well. And then if we flip to the other set side of the spectrum, of course, we have a huge workforce helping really in actually make the circular economy a re reality. These are the informal waste pickers. Um, and so with our Global Plastic Action Partnership, we've been working in particular to draw attention to the need to support the health and safety of these important workers in countries like Indonesia, Ghana, Vietnam. So I think my, my first point here is that as we look at thinking about building what we call a supply chain resilience 
uh, through a circular economy, we need to also focus on shaping the system to provide resilience for all of the people within it, as well as for the natural environment that we seek to protect. So that's one. Two is around technology innovation. Um, so as one of the big key pillars of the Great Reset is how can we leverage the power of technology to help us accelerate progress um, and societal progress in particular. Um, we have been thinking about how 4IR technology can help accelerate the circular economy now for a number of years. Um, and last year, actually at SDI, we launched what we call the Scale 360 initiative to help us really channel energy into this space. How can we surface the disruptors, the innovators, the entrepreneurs that are really finding the solutions that we so desperately need and leveraging technology at the same time? So the other characteristic of this relates to the first is that we do think that innovation ecosystems can and should be distributed. So how can we really surface solutions from around the world and foster ground up um, opportunities, let's say, to play a role in, in advancing the circular economy? So Scale360, we'll talk more about that tomorrow, is, is very much an active um, build mode and we welcome all collaborators to work with us on, on that. The third piece uh, that I'll flag is around global and regional collaboration. Um, we've seen that solutions to this current crisis, um, like advancing the circular economy transition, requires great collaboration at regional, national um, levels. And following on from the SDI, I think we'll continue to drive that theme through circular economy discussions as well. David referenced a number of actions that have been progressing on shaping alliances in Africa and Latin America to really help, um, I would say, surface the leadership that's coming through countries around the world uh, in addressing the circular economy and moving that forward. Um, and so what we'll be doing, and again, we'll collaborate with many of you, is driving a series of regional dialogues and bringing together leaders, looking at value chain solutions, looking at innovations, yes, here at a global level, but actually also through regional dialogues um, between November and, and through the beginning of next year as well. Um, so we, again, welcome the opportunity to really work across all of those different stakeholders and driving uh, collaborative efforts down, <laughs> I would say, throughout the world. And finally, better business. I think one thing just to flag um, a little bit more broadly, perhaps in the circular economy, but actually just a few hours ago, um, we launched, uh, let's say, the next phase of an effort to really draw attention and support behind shaping a common set of metrics and disclosures for non-financial sector, uh, non-financial factors um, around investments to other stakeholders. So ESG, basically, how do we make sure there's that common set of metrics and frameworks? We know that for decades, stakeholders have been pushing this um, and there's a lot of amazing work that's been happening. And, and what I would flag around circular economy, there are some metrics related to circular economy and this is really the community that can help inform and guide exactly how those metrics get taken to the next level and, and implemented, I, I would say, much more broadly throughout organizations uh, globally. So I would say the last uh, piece around better business for this community is how to really support the uptake of very common metrics and frameworks and also influence those. So I'll stop there. Um, we have a lot of work, I think, to do collectively over the next six months. Um, and are super happy to be collaborating with Pace and, and all of you on the, on the line to really drive these efforts forward. Um, and so with that, I think I'll hand the floor over to Roald LaPere, uh, the Vice Minister for Environment and International Affairs from the Ministry of Infrastructure and Water of the Netherlands. So thanks, Antonia. I think we're having some, some technical issues uh, here for a second. Oh, Roald, there you are. Excellent. Or not. Roald, welcome to the session and we welcome your comments, please. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, I had a bit of difficulty getting in, so um, I, uh, I didn't uh, change my background. You can see I'm working from home uh, as, as many of us, I suppose, are doing in, uh, in these days. Um, and uh, let me first of all start by, by expressing our apologies uh, for our minister not being able to join here today, but uh, I'm, I'm very happy to, uh, to replace her here. Um, and to share some experiences with you on, uh, on the role that uh, the platform uh, for the acceleration of the circular economy, in our opinion, can, uh, can play in bringing circular economy to the forefront of the great reset we're, uh, we're speaking of uh, today. Um, 
COVID-19, uh, aside from the health challenges it poses, of course, puts additional pressure on our economies and is already leading to uh, recessions and, and economic, uh, economic uh, downturn all around the world. And alongside, of course, the health crisis we're facing, we still have the climate crisis. We still have the extreme weather related to it. We have the biodiversity uh, crisis. And it is clear, I suppose, that we need a resilient and cross-sectoral recovery, providing solutions that really bring us further. And I would, uh, I would like to say that one of the fundamental shifts I believe we are looking for, we should be aiming for an economy, is to take uh, the present take, make, waste model to a circular model. I think that is the core of what my government is aiming for, and, uh, and we believe the, the pace, the platform on the acceleration of circular economy is, is very instrumental in, uh, in, uh, in realizing. Of course, the circular economy is focused on uh, designing out waste, designing out pollution, and keeping products and materials in use in, in the production and, uh, and use chain, thereby re -generate, regenerating natural systems uh, to prevent exhausting our planet. And most of us, I suppose, are well aware of the fact that the so-called World Overshoot Day was on the 22nd of August this year, meaning that every month we, uh, sorry, every year we have to borrow four months from our children and grandchildren because we just use too much resources. We use much more resources than the world can sustainably produce. Changing the way we make and use products um, has a significant impact on climate change. And I think this is something that is sometimes overlooked and that's why I would like to emphasize that as well uh, right here and right now. 50% uh, of our CO2 emissions are related to energy use. I think many people are very aware of that. What some people are less aware of is that the other 50% is actually related to material use. So we cannot have a carbon neutral society without a circular economy. It is in reality a one degree difference. If we don't um, uh, enshrine the circular economy in all our thinking, in all our policies, then we will not meet the climate change goals we are aiming for. Uh, the platform for the acceleration of the circular economy plays a very important role in accelerating, but also catalyzing the transition to a circular economy, especially as a platform where very different partners work together in making that tr transition work. That is partners from private sector, from governments, but also from non-governmental actors. And in line with the Building Back Better approach, in line with the Great Reset, the leadership of PACE has recommended four uh, focus points, four important elements. And uh, I would like to briefly mention them and reflect on them also from, from our perspective. First of all, this is the recovery stimulus on green and circular investment. And this is one uh, that I think is, is, is very important in these, these days, these weeks, these months, where uh, almost every government in the world is working on a recovery or stimulus package. So I think it's very important to uh, realize that that is where things begin. The second, um, uh, the second focus of the PACE leadership is on creating a policy framework for the circular economy. And here I would like to uh, share with you the experiences we have in the Netherlands. Uh, our government has officially embraced the target of a full, fully circular economy in 2050 and a 50%, a 5-0% five, five, reduction of raw material use in 2030. By Doing so, we not just put a goal uh, for 2030 and 2050, we also translate that into transition agendas for different sectors so as to ensure that we will be able to reach that goal. And of course, we hope to team up with as many other countries, as many other uh, private sector uh, entities, as well as, uh, as uh, non-governmental entities in doing so, in working together to reach uh, those uh, those goals. And uh, I would like uh, to add to that, that of course, no country, uh, and that is the case for the Netherlands as well, can become circular in itself. 
the, the chains, the production chains, the supply chains, the value chains are such that you cannot do this on your own. You need to do this together. Um, the third priority of the PACE leadership is um, the adoption of circular business models. And I think uh, this one uh, is, is pretty evident to, uh, to most uh, uh, private sector representatives, but I think it's a very important one also from the government perspective. And, uh, and here uh, it's important that we support also as governments uh, businesses that are shifting from one-off transactions towards an ongoing relationship with customers, but also that take products back, that um, take products back, of course, at the end of their economic life, keep raw materials uh, in use for as long as possible and reduce reliance on uh, new raw materials. Um, carbon pricing often is a way uh, to do so and uh, quite a few private enterprises, I think have already uh, uh, done very valuable work on that, which, uh, which we should together, I think, look into and, uh, and, uh, and take on board. Uh, the fourth priority of the PACE uh, leadership uh, is um, uh, stimulating circular innovations. And here, uh, here I think um, the, uh, the COVID-19 uh, has, I think, uh, proven that uh, innovation in general is crucial. I mean, uh, we're all uh, depending on, on science and innovations to find us a solution for the health crisis we're in. But... Uh, it is very much the case as well for the circular economy. We really uh, need to um, embrace, uh, develop and embrace competitive uh, technologies that reduce energy consumption, that harvest and reuse materials, but also um, that uh, scale the availability of, uh, of green energy resources, uh, uh, for example. Uh, not to uh, not to forget uh, the uh, expansion of product life cycles as well as of uh, reduce waste uh, and uh, and that requires further stimulus as well. So in conclusion, I think as we move uh, from towards uh, the recovery from COVID-19, we must of course embrace the future as always and not postpone the inevitable by hanging on uh, to the past. We must reject waste. I think that's pretty clear. Adopt circularity uh, by leveraging all the knowledge, all the power and all the influence we have to push forward on the priorities as I just described on the circular economy. Uh, that will take a deep collaboration between business, government and civil society. And uh, we, uh, we believe uh, the regards will not just be well worth it, also a stronger ecosystem uh, that will be more resilient for the decades to come will be the result of it. And that is uh, something uh, our planet not just needs, our society not just needs, but requires. Um, the PACE platform is, uh, is absolutely crucial in accelerating and catalyzing this shift. Uh, it brings together the right actors and uh, it continues to be the engine behind the positive work on the circular economy. So, as we move forward on this agenda, uh, I, uh, I could only reiterate the importance of circular transition to achieve our goals and, uh, and uh, reiterate my belief, our belief that the platform on the acceleration of the circular economy is a very important uh, instrument, a very important platform to do so. So uh, in ending, I would like uh, Antonio also through you, thank the World Economic Forum for uh, the, being the driving force behind PACE for, uh, for many years already, for, for David and his team in uh, really bringing, uh, bringing it further in the, in the last uh, year or so. And I hope together with you and the others participating today, but also the other partners in PACE, we can, uh, we can bring forward that agenda that uh, the, uh, uh, the world so desperately needs. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roald. I, I think one thing that's that's very clear within uh, the PACE community is we have leaders, and I think Antonio and Roald are, are great examples of that, of setting some bold uh, future uh, uh, standards uh, for us all to look at. And so thank you to Antonio and Roald for setting the stage here and ensuring we have the context and inspiration we need to act. 